Mom and dad, what is this like to kind of live through it again, but in a very different way with your son having the success as coach? Well, for me, it's a totally different way. Um, when Mike was going through this, we just were kind of growing up and just went with the flow and it was just kind of fun or blah, blah, blah. When it's your son, it's not quite that easy. You, you already know too much compared to what we knew when we were young. Right. And dad, can you detach from Super Bowl champion coach and just be dad? Well, it's hard, but you know, you know what an opportunity, opportunity it is for him. And at the same time, you know, you don't get those chances very often. And uh, I think Kyle feels the same way. So looking forward to that game tomorrow. I'm curious, Peggy, you are very familiar watching someone you love coach a big time football game. Mm -hmm. What kind of spectator is Mike as he's watching the games? He's actually not that good. Uh, he, I'm a little more vocal, but I kind of am used to that. But he's sometimes he gets so furious at the referee's calls. Um, that's kind of the worst things, thing. Things haven't changed. Yeah. I was going to say that. <laughs> right. I think we've seen it's that. It's kind of like he was on the sideline, only worse. Okay, uh, your involvement here is pretty fun because with technology, you can stay in touch with what's going on every day with the 49ers. What is it like when practice shows up via iPad and wherever you are, you can watch what the work was with Kyle and the team each day? Well, I really enjoy watching football. So this is like the best of all worlds to be able to sit there and watch meetings, watch practice, watch the drill work. And with the technology that you have nowadays, you can do that. And it might be a half hour later from when they start, but you get a chance to look at it. Take your time. You don't have to worry. If you've got a busy schedule, you've got something to do, you can come back, watch it early in the morning, late at night. So it's been a lot of fun for me. And how much back and forth do you have with Kyle with suggestions, things you see? You know, we don't have a lot because I know how busy he is and what you have to do to get a game plan ready. What I want to be able to do, though, is look at it so if he does ask me a question about personnel that I've watched it enough and put enough time in where I think I could at least have a chance to uh, uh, answer honestly. Take me back to uh, 1994 when you were the offensive coordinator here uh, and the San Francisco 49ers won the Super Bowl. Kyle's middle school at that point, 14 years old. Did you see in Kyle then that this is a kid whose love of football is going to take him pretty deep in this profession? Um, I think that's probably the first time we got serious about it. Um, Kyle was a very good arguer when he was little, and so we always thought maybe he'd be a lawyer <laughs> or something, and we kind of pushed that a little bit. And then by the time, I think that year really just settled it, and then by the time we got to Denver, it was like, no. So we just kind of let it go and hoped it would work out. Well, I thought, like, he was a seventh grade, eighth grade freshman year, and he went to camp each year with me as a ball boy. And I know he thoroughly enjoyed being around the players, and he got along with the players very well. And all of a sudden, it's getting into his freshman year, and he's, you know, the quarterback. And so he's got, you know, he has a very good year. And then we, at the, we get the Denver job at the end of the year, and now we're moving back. And, you know, he was a quarterback, and he was kind of like the MVP with another guy on his team, you know. So mm -hmm. he thought he was a quarterback. One of the hardest conversations I ever had with him. He said, Dad, I want to go, I want to be the quarterback of the team. I didn't have really the heart to tell him that he wasn't a natural thrower because he's your son and his elbow would bother him a lot. But he did have some great quickness and he did have a little bit of a, a little speed. And so to talk to your son when he's just the co-MVP as a freshman at Saratoga, now he's going to Denver and you kind of talk to, I think wide receiver might be your position. Mm. That was probably the hardest conversation I had with him. You've had a lot of hard personnel conversations with players. Early, early. That's got to be a tough one. <laughs> that's, that's the toughest by far because you got to deal with mom too. Right. <laughs> Were you okay with that, mom? I was, totally, yeah. Because quarterbacks get hit a lot. Of course, so do wide receivers. Right. So, But yeah, whatever. Did I read right that when the 49ers were making the run in 94 and Kyle was one of the ball boys, that he would go to school almost every day in a Deion Sanders jersey? Yeah. The same one? It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just to <laughs> wash it was like, oh my gosh, such a big deal. <laughs> it, was such yeah. a, it was such a big deal to Kyle because guys like Harris Barton. Right. Um, you got Tom Rathman. Tom. You got mm -hmm. Deion. 
they would take the ball boys out. They'd go out at night and they'd go to dinner and they would take the ball boys with him. So he got a chance to get to know all these guys on a personal basis and he's around them now as well. So it, it was a great experience for him. One of the hardest things for a kid, especially in this generation where everyone weighs in on any topic they want, is to follow in dad's footsteps. What were your concerns as parents, as a mom, about Kyle following along the family business when it came to coaching? Uh, <laughs> I knew it'd just be so hard. Um, I was kind of, a, I was definitely against him going to Washington, but I lost that argument. Um, I just thought it'd be so much easier and the path would be easier if he didn't do that. But it worked out. So they won, I lost. <laughs> but it was good for them. Mm -hmm. that, so correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. Kyle's getting in the business and he wanted to come work with you, but you wanted him to prove himself in other places. How hard did you push him to say, go learn it on your own, not under my wing, and figure it out as your own man? Well, when he decided that he wanted to coach, he went to with Carl Durrell over at UCLA. And he was there for a year, but then he found out that when you're a graduate assistant, you actually have to go to school. It's not football all the time. <laughs> so quickly, then, quickly he found quickly. that out. <laughs> so very Three quickly, months. he got an interview with John Gruden. And John was nice enough to hire him and give him an opportunity to be around and learn. So when Kyle had the opportunity to go with John, he said, Dad, he said, I'm going to have an opportunity to, you know, to really learn some offense. And John, obviously very innovative, and, you know, did a lot of different things. I said, Kyle, I said, you've got an opportunity not only to be with John, but you've got some of the best defensive coaches I've ever seen a staff put together. You know, at that time, they had Monty Kiffin, Ron Marinelli, they had Mike Tomlin, they had Raheem Morris, they had Joe Berry. I said, you're going to have an opportunity there for, if you're there for one year, two years, three years, you got to spend your extra time to learn defense because you've had some of the best coaches and nobody knew you know, exactly how good these coaches were, but I had a, a strong feeling. I said, you've got a lot of these guys that are going to be head coaches in the National Football League. And what a great opportunity for you every day when you're not dealing with offense is to learn from these defensive coaches because once you get to a certain level, they're not going to want to go over their secrets. And so it was a, such a great opportunity for him at a young age to be around such uh, great coaches. So he's with John there in Tampa, and, th and then he's in Houston with Gary Kubiak, who had been really part of your world so much during the Denver days. What did you see in that stretch of Kyle's career that got him ready to come back to you in Washington? Well, the one thing that Kyle really took a lot of pride in was learning to be a wide receiver, because as I mentioned, when he, when he did go to, uh, uh, back to Denver, he went from the quarterback position to the wide receiver position, so he's learning the wide receiver position. And he broke down Jerry Rice and John Taylor to the T. I mean, he took every route that they ran, and he got to really learn, you know, just, you know, the small details about being a wide receiver. And you could see he was getting pretty good, so, I mean, he looked forward to that opportunity. So what was Washington like to be there? You draft two quarterbacks, you have young quarterbacks, and you have your son there on the staff as well. Well, going back to Houston for a second, after being a, he got hired as a wide receiver coach, and then Gary lets him be quarterback coach, and he lets him be offensive coordinator. And the great job about being offensive coordinator for him at Houston, Gary allowed him to call the plays. And what a great opportunity that Gary gave Kyle to actually call plays. And so when I always had a deal, and I said, hey, if we ever coach together, I said, you've got to wind up being in the top five two years in a row on offense, and I'll be darned he did it. And after he did it, he said, Dad, no, I really do come. I told him I didn't think it was the best situation at that time because we did have some trouble relative to the cap and numbers and draft choices, and I thought it was going to be a little while. But he wanted to come, and I'm glad he did. You know, I think about the Washington situation, and Robert Griffin III was not your traditional quarterback. How much was uh, Kyle's XO expertise and creativity on display with that 10-win season that you guys had? Really, not only him, but guys like Matt LaFleur, Sean McVay, uh, Chris Forrester at that time. All those guys, you know, we looked at Robert. He was not a natural drop-back quarterback, we, but we knew he could you know, learn that. But what we're going to do is take some of the things that he did at Baylor and try to just kind of make sure that he could do that and do that well, and we would work on the drop-back game as, as, as it went on. But those guys were 100% 
change the offense. We still did some of the things that we did, but putting in that uh, read option and those type of things was totally those guys. Peggy, what was it like to have your husband and your son working in the same place, going to games, knowing that you were emotionally involved times two every Sunday? Um, you know, that wasn't a big deal, really, because, you know, if you're that concerned about one, you're going to be concerned about the other. <laughs> At least they were in one spot. Um, it, was, it wasn't that hard. Um, I wish, you know, it wouldn't have been as hard for them. Um, but, you know, things aren't always perfect. So they learned a lot, both of them. She said, said that, but we played. I was a head coach and Kyle was a coordinator. And I knew she was rooting for Kyle. <laughs> oh, when they played against each other. Yeah. Oh, that, that too. That, that too. And Kyle was at Houston. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was a little bit different. Back and yeah. forth. <laughs> we know it didn't end the way you all hoped it would in Washington. And this year when San Francisco played Washington, mm -hmm. win the game, and Kyle takes the game ball, gives it to you, what would that mean? Oh, I was so appreciative, you know, Kyle just even the you know, gesture of doing something like that, but, you know, I was kind of embarrassed because you know, I didn't do anything to, to deserve a game ball, but I knew what he was, what he meant by doing it and it made me feel very proud. Yeah. Yeah. Is that in some ways as the wife and the mom in this, um, that acknowledgement of thanks, Dad, uh, for um, looking after me in all these ways and getting me ready to do something like this and I'm going to take a wrong in our lives here and try to make you feel good about yeah, it. Yeah, I think he was just so excited he could do it. Yeah. Because, first of all, that game was all rain almost, yes. and they're sliding over the field and all that. And so, I mean, yeah, he had been back, you know, before. I think last year they played uh, at Washington. Yeah, yeah. But, I don't know, for some reason this was just pretty special. And I think he had told the team he was going to do it before or whatever. When I heard it, my could walk down the room, so he didn't even know it. And I just thought the TV announcers said the wrong name. Mike, you know, instead of Kyle or somebody. Because right. that does happen every <laughs> once in a while. But nope, that's for him. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. It's really hard to uh, have that last name and kind of go into the family business because there are extra expe expectations. How has he been able to handle it so well? Hmm. I don't know. I think he's just got the attitude and always has that he knows what he's doing and it's not because of the name. Even though, you know, social media will always say that no matter what. But, um, yeah, I don't think he really has that much of a problem with it. Yeah. He's got a lot of confidence because yeah. he's worked at the game so hard and he understands the aspects of the game, not only from a personnel standpoint, but he knows the, you know you got no offense, you got no defense. You, you have to know the game inside out. Your job as a head coach is to teach coaches. So when you do lose coaches, that you got guys waiting in the wings. And part of the process of being a head coach nowadays, in my opinion, especially if you have any success, mm -hmm. is being able to teach your coaches on a day-to-day -day basis what they need to know without ever lecturing them, but talking to the team on a day-to-day -day basis and. I, I think when you do that, your coaches grow. And then if you do lose a coach every now and then, you got a chance to have somebody come in and really do a good job. Good and bad. As parents, there's always that moment where you see some of you and your kids. What do you see of Kyle when you look at him? Well, you know, as, as he gets older, you can see that, you know, he is very uh, competitive. Um, he is very, uh, to get the point, he's very, what I call real, that... He's not going to, there's no BS, and players know it very quickly. Players can see through anything, and so they like people, at least in my opinion, that are going to shoot them straight and be honest with them. What do you see? Well, I see all that, too, and I think that's awesome. Um, I, Mike's had me listen to some of their meetings before when he's talking to the team, and um, I'm like, wow, did you talk to the team like that? Because he's got a lot of heart and... You just pick up the, how much it means to him. And Mike said, I did, but his is better. Yeah, no. Yeah, the detail that he has. Yeah. Uh, and, I, you know, you compare it to yourself because, you know, everything's relative. Do you grow as a coach? And I tell you what, the demands on a head coach nowadays are pretty strong. And so you have to know all aspects and you have to lead. 
in all different areas. I don't care if it's personnel or I don't care if it's, you know, the X's and O's. But it's fun, you know, to watch your son grow and uh, it's been fun for me. And he said that you're his best friend. We, we've been pretty close to the years, yeah. It's got to mean so much when it's not just the football, it's somebody who is uh, beyond a son. He's somebody who is close to you in a very yeah, special that's way. That's as good as it gets. Yeah. yeah. Mom, that's got to be a pretty neat thing to see the relationship of your father and a son. It's great. It's really good. Good job. <laughs> We all know it comes starts with mine, I was right? going to say. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, we shared it. That's great. So what are the nerves like? I mean, this is, this is big time. Horrible? Horrible. Really? Every game, it comes down to the very last play. Yeah, they don't make it easy on you. I mean, how many games ago did we beat Green Bay by enough that you felt confident? But that was a long time ago. See, bullet board material already. I know. Talking about Green Bay. Well, that's a long time ago. <laughs> You're being coached here, by the way. <laughs> a lot you know, of injuries since then. The last five games have come down to the last 30 seconds or so. Right. What's it yeah. been like watching that? Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Like, I'll walk out of the room, but I've always kind of been that way with him, too. Is that right? Um, yeah, it was not very easy. You know, the Super Bowl's in Miami. And that's where the 49ers won their last Super Bowl, and you call the plays. Mm -hmm. And this year's Super Bowl is in Miami, and there's a Shanahan call in the plays. Yeah. What would that be like? How ironic. I think it'd be pretty good. I'm not even talking about that. Let's talk about Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once a coach. I know. Things don't change, Always yeah, because, you know, it's, it's day by day. It doesn't yeah. change. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, but here's Kirk Cousins uh -huh. in this game. Here's Gary Kubiak involved mm. in this game. As, as you look down at the field, there's a little bit of Mike Shanahan every time a play is being called in this game. It's got to be neat. Well, it really is. When you, you know, of course, I know Gary so well, and he's been such part of our family throughout all the years, as well as Rick Dennison, Brian Piriani. And then having the opportunity to coach a guy like Kirk, you know, I've watched him every game, you know, since he's been with Washington, since he's been with Minnesota, and I think the world of him, you know, not only as a football player, but as a human being. You can't find a better person, and uh, he's a fun guy to be around. You know, he's one of those guys that is always the smartest guy in the room, but you would never know it because he never handles himself that way. You know, he's cool, calm, and collected, but uh, a good friend. Being in this position, does it make you miss it even more? You know, to be honest with you, I mean, you always miss it, but I'm around it every day. I get a chance to, you know, look at every practice, every meeting. And so even though you're not coaching on the field on game day, um, I get a chance to experience that. So, you know, I'm looking from the press box. I still know what the first 24 plays are. You can call them out. You look at the defensive. So in a way, you're still coaching, even though you're not. Is there a grade on the father of the coach? How's he done this year? Oh, I'd say A plus. <laughs> because you don't bother him when he's looking at that computer, right? No, it's something that you enjoy. So, yeah, you know. he loves it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so I'm glad he does it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. awesome. Because if not, uh, she'd have to put up with me a lot more. Right, yeah. right. No. It's better this, this way. Is <laughs> this is good, this is good. Awesome. Very good. Great. And he's helping our son, too. So, all winners. Yeah, all winners. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank awesome. you, Mike. Thank awesome. you. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.